in different applications that we've seen come across, uh, people want to be able to utilize uh, AutoTrack, obviously, in large applications, um, house of worship, um, large auditorium spaces. Um, with IR technology, there's always limits on how far IR will be picked up. Um, with the auto track, it's 40 feet. Now, a lot of people start to panic and think, oh no, well, that's not going to work in my application, but actually it will. Um, in the literature, you'll find when you go through it, there's actually um, an auto track cart system that we have developed where it's a rollabout cart that you would install auto track on and say in an auditorium or a house of worship application, you would roll the auto track down the aisle uh, to get within your 40 feet range, plug and play, and be able to have no camera operator uh, for that session. Um, so it's great because it can be then rolled back, put away until the next class or until the next service, um, in, until you need it again. So, Again, it's not limited just to a room that's up to 40 feet. Um, there are options to be had when um, utilizing larger spaces with it. Now, I've been referring to our auto presenter, um, and this is basically what the auto presenter is. So it's a, a six input switcher, and uh, it allows for up to 72 presets. So with that, um, you have an enormous amount of capability to do all kinds of different things. You can have one camera with this system and do up to 72 presets. So for example, here on our tables, we have push to talk mics. I just triggered a mic, and as you can see, if I was a student sitting on the other side facing me, I now would be the basically the speaker or the presenter as the student, maybe asking questions as a Q&A session, something like that. If I go ahead and release the mic, it'll actually go back to me as the instructor after the question and answer session is done. Um, we also have things, uh, if you don't want students or um, the audience uh, messing around with microphones, and a lot of times, uh, they already have a mic system, an audio system in the room and don't want to use push to talk mics. Um, we also have something called touch view. And what touch view is, is there are little RF buttons um, that are about half the size of a cigarette pack uh, to give kind of reference. And uh, what those do is it's just using RF technology. And so when they press the button, just like a push to talk mic, the camera will be preset to go to that location, wherever it may be amongst the different desks or tables or seating arrangements in the room. Yeah. Now, um, to give you an example of a large project that I completed that had RF buttons was, um, there's a large university in the US called Gallaudet. And uh, Gallaudet University is a deaf university. So of course, obviously, um, people aren't gonna be speaking. They're gonna be speaking with their hands. So what Gallaudet did was they used uh, touch view buttons um, and so that the students could then sign. So they would press the button, sign, and then press the button again and it would go back to the instructor or presenter. Um, so that's a large application where it's been used. Um, basically our tracking systems are, are very, um, uh, they're kind of all over the place. We've seen everything from, uh, of course, universities uh, to um, city council, uh, different like city council chambers where they'll have the meetings and they don't have a camera operator. Um, uh, House of Worship, again, <coughs> is another large one. Um, so there's many applications where all this technology can be used. And by fully automating a system, nobody would ever know that I don't have a camera operator here. They would think that somebody's sitting on the far end using a joystick and controlling a camera and, and watching me you know, as I walk back and forth and everything. But in fact, it's actually not. It's just all being controlled by this. And then with any other added products throughout the room, um, I can do different things, like I said, with my presenter pods um, and switching with them or uh, utilizing uh, mats. And if you don't like things like mats on the floor, um, and we can do concealed mats, 
or exposed. We also have IR sensors that can be uh, installed into the ceiling so that basically when a presenter steps underneath the cone, uh, the invisible cone that's coming down, it'll actually trigger the same as a mat would. It would trigger because it would sense motion under there and hit on that preset that's been designed and set ahead of time. So those are some different things with, um, in regards to automating a system. Um, it, it's fairly simple. Uh, all of these products work well with existing systems that you might already have. Um, it's not like with, uh, with automating a room at all that you would have to um, reinvest in the back end of your system. Um, obviously, there's different things, uh, whether you're using HD tracking or standard depth um, on your back end, but for most systems, you can decide to integrate these um, along with any third party uh, controller, um, switcher, codec manufacturer. Um, we're actually a Polycom Arena partner. Um, we work well with all of the codec manufacturers, Tamberg, Life Size. Um, Polycom, uh, we can integrate with all those. Uh, Vadio is uh, well known for being able to do that and um, our technical team here actually, um, most of them have all worked on the integration side so they have a wealth of knowledge uh, when it comes to utilizing third party systems and Vadio uh, equipment. Um, some other things to mention uh, are um, in regards to uh, camera systems. Now, as you could see, I was when I was switching um, with the student microphones, I actually have a camera up above my, you can kind of see the shadow from it, up above my display there. And that's what I like to call my student cam. So uh, basically that camera would be used for any uh, triggers or shots that you want going directly out into the audience. Um, so you could get by with a two camera system with just your auto track and one of those cameras. And again, you can have up to 72 presets set. So it's not like you have to invest in a whole room full of cameras. If you don't want any audience or student shots, you don't have to have them. You can just go ahead with an auto track system. Um, and then there's some applications where people want tracking and it turns out in the end that they can't utilize tracking. So people have asked me, what do you do in that situation? That's basically when um, the triggers that I've used like the mats and an IR sensor and stuff come into play. Because what happens in that, those applications is generally when the system is set up, It'll be set up on a fixed static shot of, say, the front of the room, so a large wide shot. And then I'll utilize my triggers in different locations like my whiteboard or my podium or lectern. Um, and when I get to those uh, preset shots, it'll actually just pull off of that wide front shot of the room that I've been walking throughout and it'll zoom in on me at those locations. So I still have the look of an automated system um, and that maybe somebody's still controlling the camera. I just don't have any tracking going on. So that is an option too, and it is widely used, either because of budget restraints or because, again, they just have a room where tracking isn't gonna, isn't gonna work out for them. <coughs> um, a little bit of background on the auto track system. Um, Vadio actually has had tracking for quite some years now. Um, our first system, which is still around, is called TrackView. And TrackView is a motion-based system. What it is is there's no lanyard. Um, it's, it's actually detecting motion. So that system, it finds pixelation change throughout the image, and it follows wherever that pixel change is happening. Um, some good things to that system, again, there's nothing to wear, so sometimes people are afraid of losing a lanyard or something. There's nothing to, you know, nothing to worry about having to put on. Um, a downfall to that system is if you have a very interactive room, obviously if you have a lot of people coming up to the front of the room, you have to worry about the camera detecting their pixel change in the image and, and picking them up and trying to follow them. So. Um, 
that's kind of, there, there's pros and cons to both systems. Obviously with AutoTrack, um, having the lanyard um, and the fact that you can have an interactive room and not have to worry about the camera picking up anybody else coming or going from the room or something, um, that's, that's the positive side to um, uh, AutoTrack. Now, AutoTrack um, was developed um, over the past couple years, actually, um, by the University of Michigan. Um, when we were doing some R&D on a new tracking system, and we knew that we wanted to have some type of IR-based system for our next tracking uh, product, we actually found out that the University of Michigan had been uh, working on a tracking system and had been utilizing it uh, for the CERN, for the Super Collider in Switzerland. So um, basically what it was was they had people being tracked uh, throughout the rooms there um, uh, dealing with the Super Collider. And so we went out and uh, visited at the university and worked along with them and actually ended up purchasing the technology from them. Now by purchasing that technology, we also are working in conjunction with them all the time to make um, updates or to differentiate the system um, in different ways. So there's constantly uh, new research being done on uh, different things to be able to add on to the, the tracking system and, and ways to better it. Um, so that's kind of some background info on where this particular tracking uh, came from. We're basically the only company that's doing anything with tracking. Polycom does have a new track system that's based on um, basically sitting around a conference table. So it's not really based on any um, throughout the room movement like ours is. Um, so they, they are different systems, but otherwise all tracking technology now is, is solely owned by Vadio. Um, right now we actually have um, a program going on with integrators. Um, there's a lot of universities and corporations out there that have old Parker Vision systems. So if you're familiar with the old cameraman tracking technology, um, and maybe it's you have one in one of your rooms, it's not being utilized, it's broken, um, it's been put off to the side, we actually are offering um, uh, money off new systems based on uh, the return of a Parker Vision system. So um, if that's something uh, that you guys have currently in your facilities, um, you can definitely talk to Duocom about it and um, there's additional uh, uh, discounts off of the product line uh, by returning, whether it's broken or working, an old cameraman system. So um, that's something that we're doing right now to kind of get people uh, more moving into that tracking direction and the fully automated room systems. So at this point, um, I don't know if uh, we want to do some Q&A. Um, I can do different things for people. Um, I don't know, Donna, if you want to. Jesse? Okay, uh, just come up to the mic and... Oh, and by the way, anyone who asks a question gets a cap, gets a hat. So even if you want to find out what's happening in Minneapolis today or what the weather is, go for it. Okay. Hi, Jesse. Hi. He's off to the side. He's off the You can't see me, but I can see you. Well, that's, that's okay. Two questions. Um, I'm noticing, uh, being a cameraman myself, you're putting me out of a job, but that's okay. Um, the camera tracks in a very jerky fashion when you, when you are uh, presenting, when you're pacing back and forth. Is there an adjustment control on the auto track so that that jerkiness is gone? Yep. Um, basically, what you can do, so like it's just doing that because I'm kind of, uh, you know, sidestepping and stuff. You can control um, and adjust the movement of the camera. It can be um, adjusted in the system, uh, both obviously how fast it moves, because some people uh, think that it moves too fast or they think that it moves too slow.